If you haven't been using OBS Studio to do your streams, well, now's the time. Streamlabs OBS is in hot water, and if you're looking to switch over, I got the guide right here for you. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into tech, PC hardware, gaming, string tips, news, and reviews, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So if you want to talk more tech or stream tips or anything like that, feel free to drop a follow, swing on by, and let's talk. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So Streamlabs has found themselves in hot water. And well, some of the stuff that they've been doing isn't new. People like Nutty have been pointing out the issues that Streamlabs has been doing, messing around with Google results so they appear at the top and other stuff for a while now. And, and now everybody's kind of getting caught up on that. The straw that broke the camel's back recently, just a, was it a day or two ago, was that they launched a service that lets you use Streamlabs called Streamlabs Studio through a console. Essentially, your console gets piped in through them, and then you can add your overlays and alerts, and then it goes out to the streaming service that you're actually trying to use. So that way, you don't need to use a streaming PC hooked to your console to get that sort of stuff. That's great and all, but guess what? They basically copied a company called Lightstream that has been doing that for a long time already, down to their website design. And it's pretty blatant. Not only that, they've also reappropriated the term Stream Deck for their own use, which is a term that Elgato uses. That, that word, that, that sort of thing belongs to them. And, well, Streamlabs doesn't care and they use it anyways for something that they're advertising. And then on top of that, the, they, the whole OBS part of their name, the OBS Studio Devs requested that they don't use that in their name and they did it anyways. Um, there's a lot more going on as uh, like employees who stood up for anything as, as far as their shady business practices, just getting fired and all sorts of stuff like that. I'll actually link Epos Vox's video where he goes more in depth into what's happening, as well as some tweet threads you guys might want to look at down in the description below. The reason you're probably here is you probably want to switch to Stream Elements, which is probably Streamlabs' biggest competitor. And Stream Elements is a service that basically does everything that Streamlabs does, although it uses, it goes through regular OBS Studio. So you'll be on the actual software you need to be using if you're going to be using Stream Elements. I just want to clarify that there is no Stream Elements OBS and neither is their OBS Live add-on or plugin a version of Stream Elements OBS. All that is is a plugin that attaches to regular OBS Studio. And if you're using Stream Elements or you're using OBS Live, you're using OBS Studio proper. Now for this tutorial with Stream Elements, I'm going to be starting with a blank slate as if you're just going cold turkey away from Streamlabs. However, I'll link some stuff down below that goes over how to transfer your stuff from Streamlabs into OBS Studio because, well, it's actually relatively simple. However, Streamlabs OBS has made it somewhat more difficult to transfer all your stuff. But long story short, if we go down to the desktop, right here and you're looking at your OBS studio, you can go to scene collection up top here and you just click import and it will either automatically scan for importable stuff you, uh, because it's looking for the collection path or you can click those three dots and navigate exactly to where your uh, scene collection that you want to import is. Basically what you do in Streamlabs before this is you just do this almost the same thing. It's, it's very similar button under scene collection. You would just click export and then you give it a name down here, save it to where you want. And uh, there you go. And then that's where you point OBS studios import at, and you'll get your scenes here. That's the, the basic gist of it. But like I said, I'll leave a description. I'll leave a link in the description down below to help guide you through that a little bit better. So first things first, now that we're looking at OBS right here, nice blank slate of OBS is if you want your activity feed and your uh, your chat ability to change your titles and stuff like that, you can download the OBS live add on from stream elements and then you log into your Twitch account or YouTube account 
uh, through there into OBS. But alternatively, if you go into settings in OBS and then stream, here is where you can click connect account, which as you can see right here. And then that is where you actually do your login for this preferred service that you're trying to do. You select your drop down here for which service that is, and then you click connect account and that's where you log in and that's when you can get your activity fee chat and other more advanced stuff so with that out of the way once you do that and you want to get going on stream elements go to streamelements.com and sign in with your preferred account i already have a fresh account logged into it here as you can see and there we are so then you want to go to the left to where it says uh, streaming tools and then overlays gallery and in overlays gallery, you can pick all sorts of stuff. They have their own free overlays. And I'll go over a little bit as to how to import existing locally saved overlays a little later. And uh, but for now, we're, again, we're talking fresh approach at it using the stream elements provided stuff. So let's say neon streaming overlays. You know what? That looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at, at what that is. This looks to be somewhat animated, I believe. Yes, this is an animated overlay. Looks like uh, it's pretty neat, but uh, for the sake of performance reasons, a static overlay is always best, especially if you have a mid to low range system because streaming, especially on a single PC, can take a toll. However, if you have a beefy system, feel free to do the same steps, but with one of these animated overlays. I'm gonna go find a, uh, an overlay, a theme pack that is static. Okay, so let's go with this one called Royal Green Super Theme. If you click it, you can see the different kinds of scenes. This is how the in-game scene looks like. Click over here, this is how like a, a talking scene that you could use looks like. Instead of putting your game here, you would put your camera here. So you have a nice big camera angle, your chat on the side, socials, information, a starting soon screen, be right back scene, stream ending scene, pretty much everything that you would want. And in order to add this to your stream elements account, all you do is click create my overlay. When you do that, you see all these browser URLs. Don't worry, you don't need to sort of memorize or copy paste or anything like that. You can just go down here to where it says go to my overlays. And when you click that, you see now they're in the my overlays section, which you can see on the left side, which is behind my camera. But as you can see there, there's my overlays right there. Matter of fact, let's move the camera over, make things a little easier to see. So if you ever need to go back and, and make any adjustments to these overlays and you find yourself at the dashboard, all you do again, go to streaming tools on the left, click my overlays and there they are. So now the first steps, we have five overlays here. One, two, three, four, five. And this is the gaming one. This is the talking one or chatting one. Here's a starting soon screen. So you can open OBS and then with OBS open, let's just you know list those off here. There's already a scene in OBS. We have a default scene. We're going to call that starting soon and then add another scene by clicking the plus sign down here. We're going to call this uh, talking and then add a, hit the plus sign again. We're going to add another scene. We're going to call one called uh, gaming and we'll go with uh, let's see one more the BRB scene. And so let's go to starting soon. As you can see, there's nothing going on here. So if you want the starting soon uh, countdown on your stream, all you need to do now is go back over to uh, do stream elements. And we have the starting soon screen over here. You can click the three dots that are right there and just click copy URL. And when you click copy URL, it saves that to your clipboard and you can go over here in OBS. You click the plus sign on the bottom you go to browser because we're going to be adding a browser source and you're going to, you want to name this again. We're just going to do it starting countdown and that's what I'm going to name this source. And then I press enter and you can see all this where it says URL. You want to paste it there and look, that's the copied URL that we, that we went with. So once you have that and it says width and height stream elements overlays are designed for 1920 by 1080. So we have, 1920 by 1080 and then lastly you want to click this box that says shut down source when not visible that way this scene isn't using resources even if you're not on the scene and everything runs better so you click that box and then you click ok and you'll see it appear boom just like that and now you have your starting soon screen but look 
you can see how some of this information doesn't make any sense right now or rather it's not customized for your specific channel it says twitter instagram youtube if you have socials you want to go back over to it and this is going to apply for every overlay by the way we're going to click the edit button on it which you can see right here basically under my camera we're going to click the edit button and then you get the stream elements overlay editor the stream elements overlay editor is pretty cool because you can literally click anything on the screen almost similar to obs so for twitter i can even just click that i click that where it says twitter and then i'm going to go over here on the left to where it says settings and in that settings you can see there's the message i can edit and i can put my twitter social right there and uh, you can even change the font if you really wanted to here's the text settings if i wanted it to be something a little more readable i could always change it like that and you can do that with any asset that's on the screen here you want to change your instagram click where it says instagram you see where you can type it up here and then you just type it there you go. Same thing applies for literally everything else on there. Even your timer is customizable. It's a 10 minute by default. And then you can just go into here again. There is like there's 10 minutes. You can do 11 minutes. It's all right here. Everything is clickable and editable. And if you wanted to use your own assets, your own images, all that sort of stuff that is here in stream elements that you bring into OBS via browser source, you can do that, too. Let me show you how. So this is what you do. You go down to where there's the little plus sign right here. That little plus sign gives you a bunch of options to do all sorts of stuff. Go through, have a look. You can do subscribers lists. You can do followers bits. All these labels to do like your latest bits, latest donos, latest hosts, all that sort of stuff. You can do you customize alert sort of stuff like Capogen, store redemption related things. You can have more engagement related things like media requests merchandise goals, a subscriber credit role, um, contests, and that sort of stuff. So Stream Elements has a lot of power in here, but we're talking about importing your own assets into it. We have that plus sign. We're going to go to static slash custom, and you can see here, add a text box, add an image, add a video. You can have a rotator, so image or videos as a slideshow that runs in. Uh, you can even have your own, if you have sc.merch, so Stream Elements' is own merch thing, which they make really good merch by the way so uh stream elements merch i i vouch for that it's good stuff uh or even just custom widget if you wanted to bring on any other custom stuff that's uh html css javascript you can do that in stream elements and it'll just be sitting in there in your obs via the browser source so you can always click add an image and then you see here right right here so set image and this is where you can drag and drop the image to select it and then from there you can bring it in let me show you how to do that i'm going to just click in and then i'm going to go to like downloads folder for example and there's my brother's icon i'm going to click that and there it is it's a png so it's transparent background and i can click upload and then from there i can click submit and now i have an image that i can literally put anywhere and it will show in the obs so once i click save if i click save and then we go back to obs hey there it is. That wasn't there before. And that's just adding an image, uploading it into stream elements. And there you go. The same applies for sounds and alerts, by the way. Speaking of alerts, if you want to do any customization to that, you see where it says layers. You go ahead and click that over here on the left. And there's a bunch of layers of different stuff here. This is literally everything that's on the screen. You can go down to alert box. And on the alert box, you can Let's see, you can click that and then go to settings and you can see you can turn on alerts for followers, subscribers, tips, cheers, hosts, that sort of stuff. And if you want to do any customization to it, let's say the follow alert, you can click it and uh, you can hit set video. You can change how it looks. You can change the image that comes up by clicking that. And there it is. Upload sound. So if you upload a sound, you just this you, you see this menu again, you click it. You go to down whatever folder that it's in and you can just like clicks anything in here like a uh, uh, laser buildup sound. And with the laser buildup sound that I have there, I uh, it's uploaded and I can click play to preview it. <laughs> there it was. And then you just click submit. And now I can when I get that follower alert, it's that laser buildup sound. So it's very simple to even use your own sounds and the alerts in here. So with that said, once you're done on that overlay that you're on, like we're done right now on the starting soon screen, you click save and then you click this back arrow and there you go. 
So now let's move on to the next one. It's going to be the talking screen. The talking screen, I can just click edit if I want to bring it up just to have a look at it. There's the assets again that you can change the titles to. So I'm going to click Twitch. I'm going to go to settings on the left and look, I can change the name of the Twitch that appears, which is uh, it's over here behind my camera. So uh, let me select that so you guys can see it. See all the different assets on the right here, there, 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 there. That's all editable just like I showed you guys a second ago. And once you've played around with this and you're happy with how it looks, you can just go over to where it says copy overlay URL. Again, it's at the top. It's right here. Click that and uh, click that. And then you go back over to your OBS. Then you go over to your talking scene and then you click the plus sign. We're going to click browser source again. We're going to call this chatting. Then you're going to paste the URL in the URL section, and then you're going to type 1920 by 1080 in those spots right there. And then make sure again, click shut down source when not visible. Then when you press OK, your your overlay appears right there. And then we just do that one more time. Let's go to the gaming scene and we're going to go back to here. We're going to click the back arrow. We're going to leave from that and then the gaming scene is this one. I'm not going to go into it this time. I'm just going to click the three dots, click copy URL, bring up OBS, and then we're going to click the plus sign here, go to browser, type in in game or the name of it, paste the browser URL in the URL section, type 1920 by 1080, and then click shut down source when not visible and press OK. And again, there it is. There's already the webcam frame that you're going to stick your webcam in. Now, if you wanted that webcam frame in a different spot, easy. All you do is go back to that overlay. Then you click edit. Once you click edit, it'll load up. You can grab that webcam frame and move it around however you want right in here. So I can, uh, let's see, do that. Let's see here, right? Nope. That's the bottom of it. So sometimes it's a little tricky because there are different pieces to the frame. And so I'm trying to see where I can move it from that says here. Now, if you're having trouble selecting anything, just look at the layers list that's here on the left. Cam bottom part is not locked and it is visible, but 169 cam, which I'm trying to move. And you can see it has the, the you can't do that icon on there has the lock on it. I'm going to unclick that lock and now I can move all that. See, I can move the frame now again, like I mentioned, other pieces go with it. And uh, so you can move the frame wherever you want, though, and then make sure you move the rest of the stuff. Let's say I want the frame on the bottom right of the screen over here. Then make sure you move the bottom piece of it to match. And then like whatever other text that's down there with it, other images, the top piece of it, stuff like that. So once you moved it all over, you just click save. And then you can back out of that. You go back to your OBS and look, it's been moved. It's down in the corner. I didn't move everything as you can see. I was just quickly describing for you guys, but then it just goes over there and then you move your camera into that frame and there you go. You're good to go. So then lastly, let's just add the BRB scene real quick because that is pretty important. I think is to have a BRB back screen. So people, so viewers don't potentially just come and then there's nobody sitting there and they just go, what's going on? Nah. So we're going to click the three dots again. We're going to click copy URL, go back to OBS, hit the plus sign, go to browser, type in B right back or just BRB and then paste the URL. That, type in the, the resolution of it. And again, shut down source when not visible. And here we are. So now you have basic overlays set up and ready to go starting soon. And then you have your talking screen after that. And then we have the gaming scene after that. And as you can see, it sort of like takes a second to snap in because it's loading the browser source via the internet. It's browser, web browser, internet. And so if you wanted it to look a little more smooth for your stream side, you can always just click studio mode in OBS studio and you see it pop up on the left and the right. And I'm going to move my camera again one more time. And you see left and right here. So you have the scene that you're on, which is on the right and the preview, which is on the left. So now if I wanted to move over to uh, the BRB scene, but I wanted to do it smoothly, I click it, let it load on the left. And then in the middle, I can just click transition and bam, fully loaded. And you're nice and smooth with that transition. So setting stream elements up and getting ready to stream is only part of the story. Getting OBS configured right 
is another uh, thing that you have to do correctly. So that's the basics of getting your stuff configured with stream elements, but we still have to worry about microphone sources, desktop audio sources, and that sort of stuff. And that's all in the settings of OBS. So let's go down to that. If we look down here and click settings in OBS, then we get this menu up here. For stream, you can do it via, um, that would be the stream key and you just get your stream key from the website that you're using and paste it in there select a server whatever you want to do or you can just click connect account and log it in and then you don't need to worry you don't need to worry about that then you go to output and this is where things get a little tricky because it depends on if you're streaming to youtube or twitch but let's say it's twitch well if you have a, a graphics card an nvidia graphics card you might see nvidia nvenc h264 new that is generally recommended, but if you have anything older or uh, lower end than a 1650 Super, you're going to be using the old version of NVENC, not the new, the new, better, improved one that came with the Turing graphics cards that started with 1650 Super and higher. And uh, so either way, though, you're still good here. I'll, I'll talk about why that matters a little later. So we come down here, rate control, CBR, that's basically where you want it. Um, you can have whatever bitrate you want. It depends on your resolution though. I generally don't advise 1080p 60 if you're playing fast paced games, fast motion games. Um, 900p is a good middle ground. So I like doing 7,000 kilobits per second bitrate. I'm not a partner, but if you're confused about that, realistically, you can go up to 8,000 and be just fine. But you got to remember, uh, not partner means not guaranteed transcoding. So if people are trying to watch on a phone and you have a high bit rate, bit rate like 7,000 to 8,000, it might buffer for them a lot because they can't lower the resolution to make it easier for them. So be aware of your audience with this setting. Do it lower if you think you got a lot of mobile viewers. Do it higher if you just want absolute um, good looking quality. Keyframe interval two, preset max quality. This is great, especially if you're on the newer generation NVIDIA graphics cards and profiles high. I usually leave look ahead unchecked, cycle visual tuning, GPU is zero, which means primary, max preframes two. If you have a, a processor with a high core count, we're talking 10, 12, 16 cores or more, you're generally perfectly safe doing X264, which is using the CPU to do the encoding and it looks a little more like this again you're going to want to put keyframe interval 2 do the bit rate however you want and then select your cpu preset i would say go to fast or medium and you should be okay for most things and uh and the rest you can leave alone i'll put some x264 options to help improve the quality so you don't have to use that as slow of a preset and still get a good look like fast with this preset stuff that i'm going to put in the description so make sure to look down there will help it look a little bit better but for now we're going to go back to nvenc then we move on to audio and so here is where you set your default devices for the uh for your stream desktop audio if you have a basic setup where you just have a headset your computer your microphone and it's not through it like a wave 3 evermedia nexus or go xlr or anything like that your desktop audio is going to be whatever you're hearing so it's going to be your headphones as you can see here there's a bunch of different stuff and you want to select whatever you want to hear stuff out of as desktop audio because that's basically going to be what your stream is getting all its audio from desktop audio 2 could be another one of those devices another source of what sound is coming from down on this list then you have mic uh, you, that would be your microphone and as you can see here you can select whatever microphone you want there's microphone usb audio if you have just a usb mic it might be in there but just make sure you click your microphone there now anything that you click here in these settings the global audio devices mean they will be in every scene let me demonstrate i'm going to take my microphone which is my chat mic and i'm going to hit apply now it appears right here in obs as you can see the stuff is bouncing around and if i go to another scene still there if i go to another scene still there and if i go to another scene still there so if you have different scenes that use different microphones you'll need to add those separately in order to do that for example in the let's say the talking scene you can hit the plus sign you go to audio input capture you type in second mic for example and then you look in your drop down list and I'm going to do this USB audio device that's there. 
and there it is right there now if you don't get any activity from it you can just click it go to properties and make sure that the right one is selected here so i selected the wrong one i meant to select this toner click the toner and now we have activity in that microphone and there you go and that will only exist in that scene if i move away from it like the starting soon scene look it's gone it's out of the scene so something to be aware of when configuring your stuff Back in settings, we're gonna go over here to where it says video. As you can see, this defaulted to 1920 by 1080 for your base canvas, which is usually your monitor's resolution, but it doesn't have to match your monitor's resolution. You can leave it at 1920 by 1080 for your base canvas. Output scaled resolution, that is what your stream is getting. And uh, like I mentioned, 900p or 1600 by 900 is generally what I like to do for middle ground and you can click your drop down and you'd be like oh look it's not actually there you can just click type it select it and then type 1600 by 900 and there it is and aspect ratio matches you're good to go dan scale filter Lanxos, and then your common fps value usually 60 and there you go now you have a 900p 60 fps stream output and it's going to look great because it's a good middle ground between 720p and 1080p at 1080p fast motion games don't get enough bitrate from a service like twitch for it to look proper they look all grainy and blocky and that's no good we're not quite done yet if you wanted to add a game to your gaming scene and you're unfamiliar with how to do that go to your gaming scene or any scene you want to add it you click the plus sign go to game capture well you can do display capture game capture is the more efficient one but let me just show you display capture just in case you click display capture leave it that press ok and then select whatever monitor that you want to look at and then you can just press ok and hey there it is although you do want the game under the browser source that you have so then you can just click it and move it down and there you go easy but we're not going to be using display capture so we're going to get rid of that we're going to hit plus sign we're going to go to game capture i'm going to call this pubg because i do this for every individual game that i play and then you press ok on that and then where it says mode i like to do capture specific window and then once that game is running you can click it here and then look pair player unknowns battleground so i click that I click this button that says limit capture frame rate. I'll have a video coming later as to why I do that, but long story short, will help improve capture performance. Click that and then press OK. And as uh, let me go ahead and make sure that the game is loaded so you guys can see it. And the game should be loaded and it should be appearing here in just a second. And there you go. The game is on the screen. But look, it's above my camera source, my in-game overlays. Alerts won't show. Your camera won't show. You want to just click that and pull it down and speaking of camera the way that you want to add the source for the camera again is click plus sign go to a video capture device and you can label it like primary camera and then you click where it says device and there's your there's your drop down i'm going to go ahead and select live streamer cam 313 which is a webcam that i have up above and go ahead and double check the configuration and bam, it came up. That's my overhead camera that I use. Once that is up, you can go ahead and click it and then resize it to fit your camera box and move it into your camera box. But look, it's going on top of it. It's not actually behind it looking proper, which is a problem. But like I mentioned, most stuff, if not everything, is going to go behind your browser source, your overlay source. So I'm going to take that camera source, I'm going to click it and I'm going to drag it down above the game, but behind the in-game browser source. And now you can see the bars of it are over the webcam source. And then I can just click and click and arrange it. And there it is all fit in just like that. One thing you can't forget to do though, is on that camera, click primary camera, bring those properties back up with the camera properties up click deactivate when not showing that way the camera actually shuts off when you're not on the scene that's using it and then you can press ok again but for the talking scene basically once you have the camera added it will remember that you've added that source before so let's go to the talking scene i'm gonna hit the plus sign go to video capture device and look i don't need to create a new one i can click add existing then click primary camera and then it's going to appear once the camera turns on over the entire source just like that we move it behind it again behind the browser source and look there we go and now your camera would be there in the center your chat would be on the right and you just talk with your chat interact with them and yeah 
And the cool thing, if your camera is in use in the scene that you're going to go to, it will just stay running and it'll look like this. So go to gaming and look, we just transitioned to the gaming scene. Everything was down here and awesome, we're good to go. Your stream is relatively ready for action now. But wait, we're not quite done yet. If you did download any local assets from something like Nerd or Die, Visuals by Impulse or Own.TV, or was it own.gg, whatever, um, you can actually use those in the scene. And let's say you're not gonna be putting them into stream elements and have to wait for them to snap in when they load. You just wanna do it straight into OBS from your computer. Well, let's say we're gonna add it into this scene here, the gaming scene. So we're gonna click the plus sign in that scene. We're gonna go to image source. Most of the time it's an image source. It could be a media source if it's something that plays like an animated one, but if it's a static one, it's usually an image source. We're gonna call this, um, I don't know, webcam frame. I think we're gonna do a webcam frame. And then you see image file. Now you click browse and you can navigate over to it. And so I have mine saved in this one called stream overlays and alerts. Here's a bunch of panels, but that's like Twitch panels. So let's actually find a different one. And for me, it's overlay. I'm gonna to go to overlay and I can click static. And on static, look, 4.3 webcam frame, 16.9 webcam frame. I'm gonna go ahead and click the webcam frame and click open. And you can see there's a picture of a webcam frame. And I'm gonna, and again, for performance, very similar to the deactivate when not showing stuff I talked about, I'm gonna click unload image when not showing. That way, when you're not on that scene, you're saving resources. Click that box, press OK, and now you have your webcam frame locally on the computer, resize it, and then you can stick it over your webcam. But again, this is something that you want, if you look at your sources, you want that below your overlay source because that has your alerts. You don't want anything to be above your alerts. Alerts go on top. So any browser source that has alerts or anything like that, everything goes under that in the source list here. Just think about it as layered. Just to demonstrate, I'm gonna turn that overlay off and now you can see that webcam frame that I put in, it lines up perfectly with the thing. Well, I mean, you can resize it as needed and then there you go. And now I have my webcam frame from a locally downloaded source. Now there's other ways, there's other things you can do if you wanted full scenes. Like if I do that and I go back to image source, press okay, and then I go to browse. I have full scenes that I bought through my thing with visuals by impulse, like screens. If I go to static for my screens, there is a intermission scene and it looks like this. When I do that, look at that. And now I have everything here. And when I switch to it, this is actually even faster See how that snapped in? But if I switch to it, if it's locally saved, this is the advantage of having this sort of stuff, by the way. It just, it's there. There's no waiting for it like with stream elements, but slightly more advanced if you guys want to do it that way. Just something I thought I'd mention. And there you have it. That covers the majority of how to get your stream set up in OBS Studio via stream elements. And there you go. Now, if you did stream elements OBS Live, you'll see a tab uh, above where you can see it right here where it says stream elements and then you can click uh, to log in there if you didn't already if you had the OBS live I'll link that down in the description below but activating through OBS live will also put the stream elements bot into your chat but you can also do that if you go to the page for it and you go to uh, just the main dashboard you can see here where it says you're just a few clicks away from stream glory click continue and this is where you can set up your tipping stuff, your chat bot, your tipping and panel settings, overlays, regardless of whether you do the OBS Live add-on or not. You do it through here and it will all be in there ready to go for you. So it even tries to get you to get OBS Live, the add-on for OBS Studio. But tipping activation, you put your email there, it gives you a link, and then that link is what you can put in your about me page or with an image to to get any donos and then you have your chat bot so you can do custom commands and things like that speaking of custom commands that's over here on the left where it says chat bot and you can see all the different chat commands that you can do you can even do custom commands if you wanted to make your own you just click add new command and you design it in here it's very very powerful so this might be a little bit longer than the previous guide that I did on setting up stream elements and OBS studio, but I feel like it's a bit more complete. So hopefully you guys like this video, screw Streamlabs.
and uh, you know what to do. Click that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to talk more stream tips, tech, tutorials, all that sort of stuff, feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk. Anyways, that'll do it for me for today. Hopefully you guys found this video informative, useful, or otherwise entertaining. And I will see you guys in the next video or maybe in the stream. I'll see you. Bye.